What is up, Nets fans? Welcome to the Brooklyn Buzz. I'm your host, Nick Faye. With me as always, Jack Manuel. What's up, Jack? Final night in New York City. Uh, sad moment, but uh, hopefully back here soon to see some more Brooklyn Nets games. Yes, we were at the game last night. The Nets picked up the W, 116-100 over the Hawks. You know, biggest comeback of the season. I think they were down 19 at one point. Outscored the Hawks 93-62 to for the last three quarters. It was a fun game to be at, Jack. Yeah, there was just something about the atmosphere at Barclays that night. Good to see our boy Brian Fonseca. Massive shouts out to him. Um, he's going to be doing big things going forward. But yeah, the Nets were just, they seemed comfortable in every quarter other than the first quarter. Um, it was frustrating of sorts. Um, but this is what good teams do. They able, are able to come back from large deficits and to win by 16 points. Um, this is a new Nets team. And going forward, uh, these are this is the expectations we have on them these days. And yeah, really another nice team effort. I think it was seven players in double figures, like we mentioned on the Periscope. Check that out on um, on Nick's Twitter page, at OTG Nick. Yeah, like you said, Jack, it was a good team effort. You know, the first quarter, one of the worst quarters we've seen this season. The Hawks outscored them 38-23. to 23. A ton of free throws, 16 free throw attempts just in the first quarter alone. They were getting inside with ease. John Collins was dominating. He had a big game anyways. But the Nets really responded and bounced back the rest of the game and held the Hawks to 23 points or less in the last three quarters. Yeah, Lynn Sanity, Len Sanity, Vin Sanity was like on, <laughs> on case for a couple of moments here and there. Uh, it was a nice moment, though, uh, Vince Carter and the tribute video there, uh, other than him getting uh, the errant elbow from our boy Rodion Scourts, who uh, did say sorry, but uh, Vince was having none of it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the game itself, uh, Nick, uh, like you mentioned, the, the tide turned late in that second quarter uh, and the Nets just didn't look back. Um, the Atlanta Hawks had their moments. Uh, don't mind that kid, Kevin Herter, either. I mean, I know he's an NBA Twitter darling, but he's a minor buzz darling. He's no Karis LeVert, but um, he, he's, on the, he's on the radar. Um, yeah, he was impressive in person. He looked better in person than on what we've seen on TV, probably. And his three-point shot wasn't falling yesterday, either. No, and like that's something that we know he has. So the fact that he was able to rebound at a decent rate. Uh, I, I liked his passing. Um, he obviously gets those Clay Thompson uh, comparisons, as Corey is not a big fan of. But I, <laughs> I sort of, I sort of see uh, a, a nicely rounded skill set. It'll be see, interesting to see how he sort of turns out. But um, you're not, you're a nice game for our guys. Uh, plenty of guys contributing. Ed Davis with the most rebounds off the bench since the turn of the millennium. So. Um, I tried to do a play-by-play -play video for you guys, but the NBA website's a, an absolute bugger. I, I'll, 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 I'll refrain from, from swearing, but it was frustrating. Yeah, no, it's, even the stats page in general just sometimes doesn't update right away. Uh, talking about sharpshooter, your guy Joe Harris had a nice game yesterday, 16 points. We saw that nice stretch in the third quarter where he really dominated the game and helped carry that momentum. I was giddy, Nick. <laughs> you were excited. <laughs> absolutely giddy. I was yelling my lungs off. Seeing those three threes from Joe sort of turn the tide and, and regain the lead, it was something to behold. And uh, shout out to the um, Brooklyn Nets. A lot of shouts happened today, but shout out to the Brooklyn Nets um, social media team for that little video to get Joe Harris in the three point contest. I mean, my loud rumblings to nowhere aren't going to get him there. But if that doesn't, then there is something wrong with the NBA because that is one of the best videos that has ever been on the internet, you know, cat videos and dog videos aside. Yeah, no, it was very creative too. I really enjoyed it. I thought that was amazing. And that should help him get to the game, especially, you know, being pretty much a top three-point shooter this season in the NBA, as long as he continues that into February. No reason he shouldn't be there. Also, Rodion's another nice game. We saw his activity defensively with his length, getting the passing lanes, the deflections, just like what he brings to the team. Yeah, boy's getting some national coverage. He's on the ringer these days, Nick. Um, really nice article from uh, Jonathan Sharks there. Um, I feel like we need to be getting sponsored or like some sort of compensation from all these people we're shouting out, though, Nick. <laughs> but it was a great article, and, and it sort of just said like the impact that Rodians has had since he's been in the lineup. We've lost like two since he's been in the starting lineup. We've lost like two games. He's a very intriguing prospect. Um, his defensive capabilities. He's very slim, but he's very long. So the fact that he's going to fill out and you know, he has the size where he could play as a small ball five, but he can play either the three or the four. And, and there were times last night where he did. Um, he's looked, he even played the two a little bit defensively. We've uh, seen just, it this season too. His capability is on both ends of the floor. And I think defensively is what intrigues me most because um, we mentioned it as well, sort of we talked about the three ball in previous games, but he seems to be getting it off a little bit quicker or just have that little bit better recognition. I think that the Hawks are, are a little bit less defensively capable than a team like the Memphis Grizzlies, but um, he's starting to really, and, and just game by game, just the acumen that he is, he's getting on both sides of the floor. Um, he's going to be special. Just what he turns into, uh, it's going to be intriguing to see.
Yeah, it's a similar situation to Karis LeVert almost, where LeVert missed so much time in college. You know, last year, obviously, in uh, the European League, he didn't really necessarily get a ton of minutes, if any minutes at all. So he's kind of just gaining experience by playing more basketball, and that's only going to benefit him. we got to talk to Angelo Russell. Very smooth game, 23 points, 11 to 20 from the field, you know, four assists, three rebounds. Not a great first quarter, but after that, he really picked it up, and he had some really great moments, and he was just silky smooth. Oh, the dude, the, he just oozes silky smoothness and coolness. What I did like about him as well was the leadership and, and the vocalness. That I, I think the fact that we had uh, such good sheets, thanks to our boy Joe at Nets Republic, we were able to see sort of him communicate with some other players, you know, make some calls to referees, sort of, you know, be a little bit more vocal than we sort of uh, talked about D'Angelo Russell in the past. Um, he's really developing into something special and, I know that the All-Star voting came out and uh, there was some uh, plenty of uh, aberrations there, but D'Anzo Russell not getting uh, enough love for my liking because I think that he has been uh, a fringe All-Star. And, you know, if there was some, you know, injuries to, to occur, then I think D'Angelo could be a, a ready-made walk-up. But he's been great this season. And what I've liked of him is his consistency and just recognition of what the game is giving him. Um, the mid-ranger is falling. The floater in person, like seeing it right up close, like the little, he does always that, that, that dinky little fake that you know he's not going to pass it. No, no one believes he's going to pass it, but it almost gives him rhythm of sorts. Um, he's a beautiful player to watch. Yeah, no, very exciting. I also liked his engagement defensively going to that third quarter. I felt like that helped lead the team. And like you said, you know, with the seats we had, shout out to Joe, we're able to see a lot of details on the court that you don't necessarily see on TV. Also, Spencer did a good job, especially steadying the ship early on when the Nets were kind of struggling or just didn't have the energy, getting to that free throw line and driving to the paint and sending them a, the idea that we can attack this team because they don't have elite rim protectors. How good was that one acrobatic? Oh, yeah. I was just like, how did he do that? That's like some Kyrie Irving ish um he was uh, he was sensational he was absolutely awesome um he, he sort of was a momentum changer of sorts so the, the nets just weren't able to get inside and for some reason attack a guy like Dwayne Dedman who is good and for some reason is a nets killer of, of sorts but which is spent, crazy to say like any team I guess Dwayne wants to come to Brooklyn why not why not but the the fact that he did attack he sort of set the tone for, for the players to sort of take him on their back. And um, it, it's really good that we sort of have guys that are just able to do different things on the floor and change momentum in different ways. Uh, the cohesion and chemistry and in terms of the skill set that it's balanced, uh, it's a very balanced lineup in terms of the talent that we have on this roster. And it's the way that everyone sort of contributes and, and makes their mark. It's, it, it shows how deep we are as a team. Yeah, even Damari, 17 points, 5 of 10, you know, in foul trouble, but he still was able to contribute and help close out that game against his former team. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And we talked about Ed, you know, just a rebound monster. Watching him in person, he's just a strong dude. John Collins was bodying pretty much everybody else in the Nets. When he came to Ed Davis, it was like hitting a brick wall. Uh, no, thank you. I do not <laughs> want to go up against Ed Davis. If, if I think I tweeted out, I can't remember if it was at Nets Republic or it was on my personal account, but I think this rings true and I should probably pin it. But if I had to like box out Ed Davis and get a defensive rebound or- You'd probably die. <laughs> I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to live, Nick. I, I'm just going to just like, I'll, I'll call it in and Ed, I'll just let you have the open rebound, my dude. Um, he is absolutely insane when it comes to his activity on the glass. Um, his M1 plays as well. Uh, I want to see him get a bit more vocal about it. I want to see him like, you know, yell out a bit um, because he's a strong dude and- you know, he, he can flex a little bit, um, but Ed Davis is awesome, and uh, we are very lucky to have him on our team. Yeah, and talking uh, about a tough dude, Trevion Graham showed some things. Obviously, struggles on the field 1-7, to seven, but we saw the hustle plays, the toughness, the defensive versatility, similar things with Rodion's. Their ability to kind of switch on multiple players should help, and especially with the Jared Dudley injury we saw yesterday with the hamstring, which will probably hold him out for a while. Yeah, he's working his way back, Trevion. We were probably a, a little quick to sort of judge him, uh, as a lot of people are, uh, in, in terms of any players. But uh, I, I really liked his activity on both ends. I like that he hit the three ball. It doesn't look super smooth, but if he's hitting it, who cares? Um, and, and I think Rondé hopefully will be back soon enough. But this should give Trevion the opportunity that he wants uh, and maybe necessarily needs. If he wants to make a mark and earn these minutes, um, then there's no better time than now, uh, obviously. You know, Damari was awesome as well, and he'll obviously see some increased minutes, and his form has been great of late. Spend some might insert into the starting lineup. Uh, what do you think will happen personally, Nick? What do you think is the more likely scenario? Uh, where's Coach Kenny going to go? 
Um, it's, you know, obviously let's say everyone stays injured. That's currently injured. I think Damari probably goes in the starting lineup because he provides a little bit more size and kind of fits the role they need where he can kind of match up where some fours or Rodeons can. I think you kind of, I think they don't, I think they tried, you know, having Spencer in the starting lineup, but they realized it works better with him coming off the bench because he can kind of do his own thing. Yeah, definitely. I, I think you make some really fair points. We talked about it a little bit ourselves, uh, just between each other. I think Damari, uh, fits that little bit better, but at the same time, I think that uh, I've mentioned before, Coach Kenny's quite u- utilitarian um, with these lineups and just being able to spread out the minutes load and the fact that we have so much depth, you know, literally Alan Williams is now going to be coming back. Obviously, that news um, of late Woj reported. Uh, I think there were some complications with the China deal from what I saw. So, you know, we, we've got that depth on our roster despite the fact that we had injuries. And, you know, when we were doing the buzz last year, you know, when we had Rondé out for periods, Kosovo out for periods, Boy, when Rondé and Karras were out last year in February, the Nets, I believe, won one or two games. Boy, did we struggle. Boy, did we struggle. And the fact that now it just helps. Uh, it just helps to have guys in the NBA. And when you're in the Eastern Conference, which is a little bit weaker, you know, if you have guys ready-made to step up and you're, you know, look at the Charlotte Hornets and the tr- Detroit Pistons. The, tr- the Detroit Pistons are suffering because they have Ish Smith out. Now, Ish Smith is not a world changer, but because of their lack of depth, they've got a guy like Jose Colomar playing extended minutes. The Charlotte Hornets without Jeremy Lamb and Cody Zeller, they're not necessarily the best players in the world, but it means guys like William Hernan Gomez have to step up. So the fact that the Nets' depth is, is proven and ready-made uh, it puts us in good stead um, for to stay around that playoff mark. Yeah, and like we said on the Periscope, a lot of credit goes to Sean Marks talking about playoffs. The Nets are currently in the sixth seed right now, won 13 of the last 17, three of the last four. So the momentum is there, and they're looking really good. You know, I know we kind of talk about this every week almost, but what percentage at do you have the Nets making the playoffs? Um, What was I at before? I think it was in the 40s or whatever. Um, I'll go with 53. I don't know All why right. 53. I'm just... I'm feeling the three today, Nicholas. I don't know why. I'm feeling really confident, especially seeing this team in person, dealing with all the depth, not being healthy. I'm going with 75%, Jack. <laughs> oh, big yeah, time. It, spicy take, but I just feel really confident what this team's doing. Also, Coach Kenny has done an amazing job. You know, there's people talking about the credit he deserves, and he definitely deserves it for all the, the fans wanting him fired during that losing streak. The team has just worked so well with all these different parts. Guys just stepping up, next man up mentality has been amazing to watch. Oh, man, I, I think a lot of guys are starting to jump on the Kenny bandwagon. And, uh, and I've, I mean, we've been on it for a while. Like, I know personally, like, I've been a pro Kenny supporter for a long time because I don't think the Nets franchise is where it's at without Kenny with his player development and the rest of the coaching staff, too. Like we mentioned earlier, you know, it's the whole coaching staff, not just Kenny. Definitely. And I think uh, some people are sort of talking about this is obviously so I don't think either of them are going to win it at the end of the year. But if you were given $100 for free, Nick, and you could put money on either Sean Marks winning executive of the year or Coach Kenny winning coach of the year, what do you think is more likely to get you some money back? Uh, I would probably say coach of the year. Not because I think that Sean Marks, uh, that Kenny's done a better job than Sean Marks. I think it's pretty even. But I think usually executive of the year is somebody who's getting like a top three record. Like I would probably say um, – you know, Toronto or someone like that, or Milwaukee even, you know, bringing all the pieces they brought in and, you know, jumping so much. I think Coach Kenny might have a better shot is because of all the injuries. Like, their best player went down in the second week in November and they bounced back and have been able to have such a great stretch. And they're currently sitting in the sixth seed and, you know, five and a half games back from the fifth spot. So it's not like, you know what I mean? Like, this has been a big change for this team. Yeah, and uh, playing devil's advocate of sorts, I think that if Sean Marks didn't provide the talent uh, for Coach Kenny to sort of utilize. Then Specifically we been... the depth. The depth. Uh, I mean, you don't have Shabazz Napier. You don't have Trevion Graham. You don't have Ed Davis. You don't have Jared Dudley. I don't think the Nets are six in, in the East right now. I think yeah, I they're... think the Ed Davis move was probably one of the most underrated moves of the offseason. Getting him pretty much within the first hour of free agency at such a good deal, very underrated move, and it's really helped this team in the rebounding department, which was a struggle for the last few seasons. But, Jack, any last thoughts before we get out of here? Um, just that check out OTG basketball. There's a, a few nice little trades there. Uh, a couple the crazy Nets. ones too. <laughs> a couple of wild ones. I've put a few out there that um, Nick forced me to do. So if you get angry <laughs> at him, not me, I'm at the J-Man JVT. If you want to slide in those DMs, have a nice little chat. But if you're getting angry at OTG Nick, that's where you find him. Yep. 
you send me all the hate. Uh, but also a big shout out to everybody who's supporting us on the buzz. Also, it's a really good time, especially our guy D Rock. We saw the game last night. Appreciate everybody. Check us out iTunes, Box Talk Radio, OTG Basketball.com, Netsrepublic.com, Dash Radio, and YouTube. Love you, Nets fans.